All right, we've got one viewer. Hello, viewer. Thank you for joining us today. So we're just waiting for a couple of people to uh, join in. Um, I'm in my very, very tiny kitchen. That is the extent of my kitchen. I love to cook and I do it with a very small working space. So I just want to show people that you don't have to have an extravagant kitchen to be able to produce some really solid meals. Um, I literally just have this one little cramped alleyway with a wall on this side and a smaller than average stove on this side. Um, but I've managed to cook quite a bit. Um, so thanks for joining in. Today we're doing a cooking 101 on lentils. Um, I like to do these cooking 101 things for people who might be kind of stuck at home right now and are faced with having to cook more for themselves, but might not know some of the kitchen basics. Um, these are some tips and also some tricks to make something that you've been making the same way all the time uh, a little more different, uh, more exciting, uh, just so you don't get bored of eating the same thing all the time. Uh, today, we're at, like I said, we're working with lentils and uh, they're one of my favorite foods. They're really good as a protein source. Um, they cook faster than beans do. Uh, usually I can get a pot on the stove and finished up in about half an hour and uh, they are pretty low carb and they've done some studies where they replaced lentils with um, if people were using rice as a side dish they use lentils instead um, and they studied the effects on blood sugar and found that everyone using that as a side dish um, their blood sugar was going down um, they were having a lot easier time managing their diabetes so they are a pretty versatile food you can make them their, your protein source, so instead of having like steak as a side, you might want to try it as a vegetarian alternative. Um, you can also use it as something to mix in with salads. You can make a soup out of it. Um, I like to make them in a big pot and just like dole them out throughout the week so I have like a side dish ready to go. Um, so they're a really, really nice uh, food to just have on hand, cook a big batch up, and then kind of parse out during the week. Um, so I'm going to hand this off to my cameraman, who is my wonderful husband, who is helping me with all these videos. There you go. All right. So to start, there are a couple different types of lentils, just like there are different breeds of vegetables. There are different types of beans. There's different types of lentils. Um, red lentils, which I have here. These are kind of the softest lentils. Um, they cook down really fast. They become kind of mashed up. Uh, when you're cooking lentils, you're going to see me today just throw a bunch of water in a pot and then throw the uh, lentils in. For red ones, you have to actually measure the water out um, because they absorb a ton of water and they cook down almost kind of the consistency of mashed potatoes. Um, they're really good for certain recipes. They make a really nice thick lentil soup. And uh, they also make one of my favorite dishes, this Turkish lettuce wrap, where you can mix the lentils with a whole grain like bulgur, which is kind of like a type of couscous, um, and add some parsley and onion and lemon juice, and it is a fabulous meal. Um, there are also green lentils. So I have regular green ones here. They get a little bit mushy when you cook them still. Uh, but you can also get French green lentils. They kind of hold their shape more when you're cooking them and they're, they have like a little more bite to them. Um, my favorite lentils have more bite, hold their shape, and are kind of more firm. Um, today, I'm gonna be cooking black beluga lentils, which is my all-time favorite ones. Uh, they're named that because they kind of look like caviar. Um, they absolutely hold their shape. They're kind of, they take the longest to cook, but by long I mean you'll be cooking to the end of a half an hour instead of maybe 20 minutes. Um, and red lentils usually cook up in like 15 to 20 minutes as well. Uh, this is the kind of dish that you can literally pull anything you've got out of your kitchen and stick it in the pot and it'll probably turn out great. Um, when I cook them up, I usually try to get some good flavors in there. The lentils will take on whatever you flavor it with, spices, aromatic vegetables. Uh, today, um, I'm going to use some onion. Uh, I've also got some garlic. Uh, I've got cumin here. This has whole seed, but I've actually ground it down so I have some powdered cumin. Um, and a little bit of cinnamon, which really 
like a little bit of cinnamon goes a long way in a savory dish, but this really makes a flavor pop. And when you've cooked them, let them sit in the fridge and then bring them out again, you're tasting this very spiced aromatic type flavor when you eat them. Um, so this is really the simplest recipe. Literally, I'm gonna take everything, throw it in and cook. Uh, when you prep lentils, every container says wash your lentils and sort them. Uh, the reason they say that is lentils are all farmed, obviously, and when they're collected they have dirt, they sometimes have tiny rocks in them. Uh, these days, when they're sorted out, if you just get a really good, reliable company, it's very unlikely you're going to find a rock in there and bite down on it. Uh, dealing with black ones, it's especially kind of hard to see if there are little tiny rocks in there, but you just kind of want to do a little search, move them around a little bit. I'm not really seeing anything. There's a couple of lentils that are kind of chopped in half and they're discolored, but other than that, there's nothing out of the ordinary in here. Um, and then they just recommend that you rinse them off. I, I'm very bad at doing this. I honestly don't bother most of the time. It's not a required step. These are not covered in pesticides. You're not gonna have to worry about that. Um, but it's nice to, if there's any like dust or dirt on there, um, or you wanna reduce the cooking time slightly, you can soak them. So I'm just going to give them a quick rinse. But yeah, if you're a particularly lazy cook, which I am, and you want to cut steps, it is totally okay to just throw these in the pot. Um, and the unlikely event that you get a stone in there, just be careful when you bite down on it. But it's very, very unlikely. I, I think it was like 10 years ago that happened to me, and I haven't really seen a lentil uh, processor since who allowed that to happen. So I have some water boiling on here. I'm just going to dump all the lentils in there. You don't even have to wait for the water to boil. You can just start the water up, put it in there, and you're good to go. I'm going to give it a stir. A lot of lentil packaging says specific measurements uh, for the water. You don't have to worry about that with these uh, firm lentils. You can just drain them like you would drain pasta at the end of the cooking process. I uh, give them a stir just to make sure they're not uh, sticking to the bottom. That's all my black lentils. So you can really, when you're using things like onion and garlic as a flavoring agent, you don't have to peel it. Um, I happened to peel the top of this. That's because it was looking a little not so delicious, maybe a little moldy, so I just took the bad parts off, threw them away, and used the rest of it. Um, so today I'm going to use this, but if this was all I had, I would honestly probably just throw the whole thing in with the skin on. Skin has flavor, skin has uh, nutrients, so you can just throw the whole thing in. You're going to be picking the onion out anyway at the end of this. This is for flavor, it's not for eating. It gets really, really mushy in the cooking process, so you don't need to keep it in there, and it doesn't really matter if it has skin for that reason. Um, for the garlic, again, you can throw it in with the skin on. The only reason I'm going to crush the garlic today is because when you crush it, it releases some of the lovely oil that garlic has, and that gets more of the flavor into the pot. Um, if you tuned in last week or saw my video, easy, easy way to peel garlic so you're not sitting there peeling individual pieces off. Take the flat of your knife, or you can take a spoon, or you can use the palm of your hand. Just lean on it. Until it squishes. Once it's squished, you can take all the pieces off very easily. They come right off. Again, not necessary for this because you can just throw it in with the skin and pick it out. The only annoying thing is if you crush the garlic and the skin is kind of loose on it like this, you might get some of the skin mixing in with the lentils and then you'll have to pick out all those individual pieces. So for now I'm peeling just to kind of shorten my efforts later. So, especially garlic. Um, number of garlic cloves in here is your choice. Uh, if you really like garlic, which I do, uh, more is better. More is always better. Uh, do as many as you'd like. So I have two today, but they're nice big ones. All right, so I have a quarter of a teaspoon and a half teaspoon for the spices. Um, cumin, I would do between one half and one whole teaspoon. Uh, that's a more dominant flavor I want in there, and it's not going to take over the way cinnamon is. So I'm going to put 
I'm gonna put a full teaspoon in today, why not? This is, uh, spicing this stuff up is to taste. I would recommend measuring if you're not used to spices because it's very easy to go overboard and not realize you put too much in until it's too late. Um, these days I kind of throw in whatever I want to throw in as much as I want, but I, because I do that, often I've gone a little too overboard. Uh, I'm going to do a very well-rounded, which means I'm not going to measure it flat off, of a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon to mix in there. It's my second spice. And then you can add some salt if you like salt. I do like salt. You're basically seasoning the lentils so they're good to go. Um, if you're not sure about salt or you're avoiding salt for any reason, skip this step. You can always add it when it's uh, served and uh, give it a good stir. Make sure everything's combined. And then pepper is very important for this. If you don't like pepper, obviously you don't have to put it in. Uh, fresh ground pepper or peppercorns added to the lentils are really, really good and they really make the flavor pop even more. So give a good generous turn on there. I've sometimes put whole peppercorns in to just cook because it makes a nice base. Problem with black lentils is they blend in really well and then you get a really big surprise when you bite into it. All right, so that's done. I'm gonna wait for this pot to boil and then I'm gonna turn down the heat slightly so that the water doesn't start overflowing. And then you literally just let it simmer for about 30 minutes, which I'm gonna put on the clock here. And that's it. When you are done, just uh, use a colander to drain it out if you used a bunch of water, which I did. Um, something very fine like this because it's gonna have to catch a lot of small bits. Larger colanders for pasta have holes that are a little too big. I also, my, my pot's made for draining, but it, the lentils will fall right through it, so I just use a very fine mesh sieve. Um, so I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch me watch a pot of boiling water for half an hour, but I'd like to just uh, finish up this talk with uh, other things you can do with lentils. So. Um, I talked about the Turkish lettuce wraps where you mix the red lentils with a uh, whole grain like bulgur, wheat, uh, couscous, things like that. Um, you add some lemon juice, you add parsley, you add a little bit of green onion and mix them all together and a little tomato paste. And you can just form little kind of meatball type size things and you put them nestled in lettuce leaves and they are really, really good. Uh, you can also make a red lentil soup. Um, for red lentils, like I said, they absorb a ton of water. So you're gonna pour all the water you're gonna use for the soup, or you can use vegetable broth, or if you're a meat eater, you can use chicken broth. Um, pour in enough that it's going to be twice as much liquid as for the lentils. You can get the uh, measurements off the back of the package to know how much that's gonna be, but it has to be at least twice as much, and you're probably gonna keep diluting it with a little bit of water because it does absorb quite a bit. Uh, for green lentils and black lentils, you can also make soup. You're basically gonna repeat every step I just did, but instead of water, you're gonna, again, be using broth. Uh, broth uh, can be of your choice, it, anything you want. Vegetable broth, animal broth, whatever you like. Um, it really is, it very works with anything you add it into. Um, I like to use more aromatic vegetables. In fact, sometimes when I make a pot of lentils, I'll also use um, aromatics. Those are vegetables that have like a lot of, basically aroma, that they give flavor and then part whatever you cook it with uh, onto the food. So I recommend also adding in ribs of celery, uh, carrots, um, you can try, if you want, take half of an onion and you can stick little cloves of, uh, well, cloves in there and, uh, throw that in the pot as well. That'll give like a different kind of, uh, aromatic touch to it with that spice. Um, if you're making the soup, you might want to just put in a couple of aromatics because when you cook it down for half an hour, they get kind of mushy. Um, or you can start by sauteing, so you can chop up your aromatics, your garlic, your onion, your celery, and your carrot. Um, make those into nice bite-sized pieces. Add one to two tablespoons of your cooking oil. I usually use olive oil. 
and uh, stir that around for a little while so it gets nice and fragrant. And then you add your broth and your lentils and then you can continue the exact same steps we just went over. Um, what I do usually right now is make a pot of lentils and I add it to whatever I feel like later. Um, as an example, I made a little plate. We have a little kitchen magic here where the dish is already done. Um, this is an example of adding the lentils to a salad. They make a really good uh, topping protein for any salad you feel like. And I, this is again something I just pulled out whatever was available in my fridge. I happen to have leftover greens. I had some snap peas. Uh, this is yellow carrot because carrots come in rainbow colors. Um, it's really good. Uh, and a little radish and I just add a salad dressing and it's good to go. So if I don't feel like cooking or I'm tired or if this was a normal time and we were going to work and coming home and didn't feel like prepping anything, I'd have the, all this stuff just sitting in my fridge, pile it on top of each other, add whatever salad dressing you want to add. Um, I like vinaigrettes, so I usually kind of make one. Um, I use apple cider vinegar, a little olive oil. You can add garlic to that, you can add lemon or orange, uh, citrus is really good on this stuff, and a little bit of mustard will make it really creamy without adding any real fat to it. Um, so you can put all that in a bottle, shake it up, and then just pour that over, and that's a really good complement to this kind of dish. So salads, soups, giant pot, wraps, lentils can pretty much be used for anything, side dish. Replace your rice with it, it'll be less calories, more protein, keep you full longer. All good stuff for a uh, nutrition perspective. Um, Alex, are there any questions popping up? Does anybody have questions? Anyone who's watching? All right, well, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, this is a free thing I'm doing um, periodically to just kind of give people some cooking tips while they're stuck at home. Uh, if you would like to donate at all, um, you can always send something to my Venmo, uh, which is at JSRockRD. Um, I welcome any feedback, I welcome any donations, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you can't afford to donate, that's totally fine, this is going to remain free. Um, it's just something I kind of want to give to people who kind of need these tips and might be looking for some guidance when they're in a new situation they might not find themselves in. Uh, but again, thank you for joining me, and uh, I'll see you guys again.